All right, let's go ahead and jump in here. Because this is all about Aperture and the photo suite, I'm going to be working in Aperture to kind of sort through my photos and find the ones that I want to edit from here. Now, before we even go into the program, I want to talk a little bit about preferences. There are some preferences that relate to the photo suite through Lightroom or through Aperture that are really important to note. You're going to want to go up to your Aperture menu and scroll down to preferences. In here, you have all of your different preferences tabs, and the one you want to access is called export. What's happening when you're taking an image from Aperture and putting it into the photo suite is technically you're exporting it to another program to continue your workflow. And so these export settings are actually very important. Now, the first thing right up at the top is something called external photo editor. I really like this because it gives me the option of when I want to select an image and bring it into the photo suite and edit it as kind of a whole, I can do multi-module based workflows. I can go in and I can combine multiple layers, create collages, do whatever I want. I like to have access to using the photo suite and it's a really, really nice, quick, easy way to get in there. So what you can do is you can actually choose the perfect photo suite eight as your external photo editor and it automatically pops up in your edit with plugin menu. All you have to do is click choose and navigate to your application. I have my applications folder automatically selected here so I can scroll through and I can find the perfect photo suite here if I want to. You, a lot of people end up placing, if they have Photoshop, they put Photoshop in here. Um, but I, I use the photo suite probably for 95% of my editing now. So I like to keep it here. Now, the other thing that's really important is if you're going to be working with a lot of JPEGs or RAW files, which is what most people are going to be working with. I think every time I do a webinar, I believe 85 to 90% of people are shooting with RAW. What happens is, is when you take a RAW file from Aperture and put it into the suite, it automatically creates a copy. You can't take your original RAW file and edit it in the photo suite. You can only edit a copy of it. We want to make sure that we give you access to your RAW file. Aperture gives you the ability to edit your RAW image, but save your original. We create a copy so that we don't destroy any of those adjustments. So here you'll see that your external editor file format and editor color space, you can select these and make adjustments here. I like to always create copies and have them be PSD files. That's my personal preference. It gives me access to a layered based workflow so that I can create some pretty complicated images. I do a lot of heavy editing. I do a lot of collage based work and I like to be able to access that. So I save it as a PSD file. You can also choose TIFF files and you can select eight or 16 bit. I keep it 8-bit, especially for my webinars, because I don't need my images to be that big, and they don't need to have that much information. But if you're getting your photos ready for print, or you want to have as much information as possible, you can swap that over to 16. You can also type in your DPI here. So I like to keep mine at 300. That's a good number for me. It lets me get my images ready for medium format printing. I do a lot of photo printing at 17 by 22 or 16 by 20, and that's a really good DPI for that. And then I can also choose my color space. What's great about the Aperture color space drop down menu here, and it's actually it's one of the reasons why I think Aperture is such a cool program, is I can choose so many different color spaces here. I have a lot more control over how I'd like to edit my images and which color spaces I'd like to access. Now, for me, I use something called Adobe RGB 1998. It's a pretty general color space. It's great for printing small or large, but you have access to a whole bunch of others. There's something called Pro Photo RGB, which is kind of one of the biggest color spaces, and a lot of people use that nowadays. It just takes up a little bit more information. And then there's also something called sRGB, and that's what you're going to use if you're prepping your images for the web. And go back up and choose Adobe RGB 1998. Making sure that you have these settings in place before you take your images into the suite is very important. So I like to make sure that I show this at the beginning so that you guys know that this is kind of like the first step. You want to make sure that these settings are dialed into what you want them to be. All right, so once you're done in here, we can close out. And now let's take some images into the suite. First, I want to start out 
and show you a little bit about our new Perfect Enhance program. Here inside Aperture, you have your Adjustments tab on the left-hand side, and you can make basic adjustments to your images. You also have some more advanced controls, which is a lot of fun. Um, you can add lots of different adjustments. I really like the Aperture Adjustments menu because you can have things pop up. You can close them out if you don't use them. You have options for things like just adding sepia tones or doing like basic black and whites. Everything is a different menu, and I love that about Aperture. Now, if you want to, you can take an image and you can bring it into our new program, Perfect Enhance. And one of the reasons why I like it is because it has all of your basic adjustments for your images, but it also gives you a couple more advanced adjustments and retouching tools. So let's go ahead and jump in there so I can show you how that works. I have this image here. I'm going to go up to my photos menu and scroll down to edit with plugin. Now you'll see right up above edit with plugin there is edit with perfect photo suite 8. Because we added the photo suite 8 as our external photo editor, it's going to pop up here. And what's awesome about this is that it gives you a keyboard shortcut, which I think is so awesome inside Aperture. So if I know that I want to take this image into the suite and let's say I want to bring it into layers, enhance, effects and maybe black and white, all I have to do is press shift command O and it puts me right into the photo suite. So that is one of my favorite features about combining Aperture in the suite is that I have a keyboard shortcut. You don't have that in any other program. Now I can go to edit with plugin and you'll see I've got all of the different modules here. I also have the perfect photo suite eight, which I can choose from this menu as well. So if you don't choose the photo suite eight as your external photo editor, you can still open the entire program and use it like a standalone. I'm going to go up and choose Perfect Enhance. Now it's going to create an automatic copy of that image using the settings that I had selected in my preferences menu and place that copy here in an inside Enhance. Now once we're in here, do a quick overview of kind of how to use Enhance. On the right hand side, on the top, you have your quick fixes pane. This is usually where you're going to start. You've got some auto buttons here that you can use to adjust things like the levels of your image, which are the whites and the blacks, as well as your auto color. I can just click those on really quickly. It's going to remove that bluish color cast and it's going to brighten up the image and intensify those whites a bit more. So it's it's got a little bit more contrast than it did before. It's not quite so flat. I have these six basic buttons where I can add adjustments to my image very easily. Things like brightness, if I want to brighten up the image. There's a plus and a minus button on each side of these so I can add or subtract whatever I'd like. There's contrast, there's vibrance, add a little bit of vibrance. I could adjust the base temperature here so I can make it either warmer or maybe I want to make it a little bit cooler again. It was too warm. I can add detail. Detail is one of my favorite sliders, especially when you're working with images where you'd like to add a little bit of, let's say grunge, a little bit more intensity to the image. We can add some detail. And then there's also a very basic vignette that you can add. Click the minus sign for dark or the plus sign for a light vignette. Now, if those adjustments don't necessarily suit your fancy and you want to have a little bit more control, you can open up the color and tone adjustments pane below. These are the same adjustments that you saw up above with a few more thrown in there and a bit more control over the sliders. Now, the first are your brightness and your contrast, very basic. Now you also have shadow and highlight recovery sliders if you need to pull out information from either of those areas, and they work really, really well. They're good options to have. You've got your levels section down here. You can hand adjust your whites and your blacks here, which I always like to do. If I want to kind of increase the contrast, I may pull the blacks over to the right to kind of intensify them a bit more, make it look a little bit darker. I have my detail slider here so I can add a bit more if it was not quite crisp enough. And then I have my color section. I've got temperature, which I had above, but I also now have tint. And then I've got my vibrant slider as well. I can move any of these around to really pump up and adjust the color. You also have this little white balance tool. It's an eyedropper. And when I click on it, I can hover this eyedropper over anywhere in my image and select a new white point. If you're working on a photo like this, I would suggest clicking on the light inside this little yellow light. It used to be a light. That is a light bulb there. 
It doesn't really work anymore, but you get the idea. Um, if you're working on any sort of urban landscape, look, look for things like architecture that have concrete or some sort of grayish stone texture to it. If you're working on portraits of people, you'll want to look for areas around them that might be white. If you can't really get anywhere that's around them, sometimes it's nice. A good starting point can be the whites of their eyes that can help adjust the color of the images. So this gray dropper tool works really well for auto white balancing your image just in case the auto button maybe didn't work the first time around. Now to finish this image off, we also have the vignette and the sharpening panes. I can open these up here. One of the things that I really like about the vignette pane is our new vignette centering tool. When you apply a basic vignette to your image, I'll go up and choose the strong vignette here. I'm going to click on it to add it. It adds a nice strong vignette to our photo. I can go down and adjust it if I want to. I'm going to make it really, really dark because I want to show you how this centering tool works. Now, when you have a vignette, it automatically places it right smack dab in the center of your image and darkens all of the corners equally. What the centering tool allows you to do is adjust where you want that vignette to actually be placed. If I put this, if I turn this off, one of the things that you'll notice is that the top part of my image is quite a bit darker because there was an overhang right up above this um, light and satellite TV sign. And so if I add a vignette to my image, like I was doing before, and I want to blend it into my image, it's going to add way much more dark intensity to the top part of my photo and much less to the bottom part. And that's just the nature of the image. When I choose the centering tool, click on it once, you get this little crosshair that pops up. And I made my cursor a little bit bigger so that you guys can really see what it looks like there. I've got this giant cursor here and I need to choose where I want my new center to be. So originally it's pretty close to the corner of where the sign is. I'm just going to pull my mouse up a little bit and click somewhere kind of in the middle here, close to where this light is. I'm going to pull my center up a little bit and it's going to readjust where that vignette is. Now, one of the reasons why I made it so dark and so intense the first time around is so that you could see how it moved. Now I can adjust my style and I'm going to change it over to subtle so it blends the vignette into the image. And I have this brand new customized vignette that's specific and I've placed it where I wanted it to be. Now, that's one of my favorite features here inside Enhance is it's so easy to use and it's so nice because I can actually move it around depending on which photo. Now I don't have to worry about this top getting so dark. I can lighten it just a little bit more so it's not quite so crazy. And then down at the bottom the last thing is going to be your sharpening. You can add lots of different sharpening. You've got a couple of presets right up at the top that you can use. My favorite part is that you have this sharpen for drop down menu. You have all of these different sharpening presets here that you can use that are specific to what type of print you're going to be doing. So let's say you print on glossy paper and you're printing um, a portrait. We have a specialized sharpening preset that's specific to portraits. We also have some that are high and low. So high is going to be a more intense sharpening on your image if you really want to pump it up. Low is going to be a little bit less little bit more subtle and then portrait is going to be a little bit more specific to removing sharpening from skin tones and you have the ability to do that and I think that's really great. You also have screen sharpening as well if you're prepping your images to place online maybe in a slideshow maybe you're putting them on your iPad whatever it might be. So you can go through and you can select what type of sharpening you want and then you can always go through and make adjustments. One of the best parts about the sharpening here inside the photo suite is that you can choose tones in your image to specifically protect. So if you want to adjust and protect all of the skin tones in your image, the lights or the darks, you can go through and do that. Now, when you're done in here, on the right hand side, the next thing that you want to do is your retouching. Now there's a whole bunch of little small distractions here on the image that I may want to get rid of. On the left hand side of our photo, there are a couple of retouching tools and the first and the one that we're going to talk about is called the perfect eraser. And the perfect eraser is a great tool because it goes through and it gives you the ability to adjust whether you'd like 
to remove objects that might be a bit more difficult. It's a content aware fill tool, which means that it's going through and trying to smart remove objects. So let's go over and there's this little paint chip that's on the right hand side here that I want to get rid of. Now, if you use our other retouching tool called the retouch brush, this works a lot better for soft gradients. It doesn't do a good job of repeating textures. So if I use this tool to try and get rid of this little paint chip, it's trying to soften and repeat, but in a kind of strange way, it's trying to create this gradient over, over the paint chip. It doesn't work very well. This tool works a lot better for things like objects in soft skies and especially skin. This is what you're gonna use to get rid of things like acne. Now, what the Content Aware Fill tool does is pay attention to the texture surrounding the area and try and replace it. When I click and drag, it does an awesome job of taking the crackling paint and placing it over where that used to be. Now, this also works really well if you wanna remove things like straight lines. There's this wire that goes across the center of the image here. Let's say we don't want it to be there. I'm just gonna click and we'll drag across the entire image and it'll go through and it's going to erase it for me. Now, one of the best parts about this is it does an awesome job of repeating lines. So I don't need to worry about the fact that I lost all of the lines in between the wooden panes. It actually kept all of those for me and still removed the wire. It does a great job of doing that. And you can use it across the entire image. You can use it in tons of different places. And it does a wonderful job of repeating lines so that you don't have to worry about having to hand stamp in all of these little spots. Now, when you're done editing, so we're finished here in Enhance, and we click Apply, it's going to go through and it's going to add all of the enhancements that we made to our image and bring us back into Aperture. Now, once we're back in Aperture, what's wonderful is that I'll have access to my original image right next to my new edited file. So I'm, I'm here back in my Enhance project on the left-hand side. These are all of the photos that I have in my Enhance folder. And I've got my original image right next to my after image. So I don't have to worry about where they're going to be. It's automatically placed back inside that exact same project for me. Now, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to zoom back out. And I want to talk you through some of the other programs inside the suite that you can access, especially ones that might be, that have activities that might be a little bit harder here inside Aperture. One of the things that I think Aperture still has a lot of work to do on is it's a, it's a wonderful program for working on your images in a very basic way. You can separate them down into albums and projects. You have <clears throat> access to your photo stream, which is one of my favorite parts. <clears throat> so I can go through and I can access my iCloud. I can access all of my different iPhone photos. But one of the things that it doesn't do the best job with is retouching. I like the retouching tools in the photo suite a little bit better. And I also like the fact that I have more control over applying effects to my images. The adjustments tab inside Aperture is great. It's very basic. But that's the problem is it's very basic. And I like to do a lot of editing to my images. I like to add lots of vintage effects. I love textures. I love borders. I love all of that stuff. And adding that here in Aperture doesn't really give me, give me access. One of the other things that Aperture doesn't necessarily do is give you a layered based workflow, combining images together to create one unified collage or multi-image look. So I want to show you how to add layers and create a layered workflow through Aperture here. Now we've got two different versions because there are two different ways to do this. If you have Photo Suite 8, you'll know that um, we usually come out with iterations of the suite. Came out with 8.1. It'll be going up today, I believe. And there are now two different ways that you can open your images in perfect layers. So let's start with the basic. I have two images here, one that is underexposed. I can see the background really well. There's the mountain in the back. It looks great, but the foreground is really dark. 
And then I have another image here that's really overblown. It's so bright. The top part of the image is almost completely blown out, but the bottom looks really nice. Now, both of these are, are so overdone that there's only so much I can do with highlight and shadow recovery sliders. So I need to combine them together here. So to do that, I'm going to select both of my images. You can hold the command key on your keyboard and just click on those two photos. I'll control click on either of these images. A lot of mice nowadays that attach to Apple computers actually have a right click, but just in case they don't, you can control click on your photos and go to edit with plugin. Now there are two, two different options you have. I can select perfect layers eight and open my images in perfect layers, or right up at the top, you'll see I can open these images as layers in perfect layers. Now the differences between these two is if I select just the plain perfect layers eight, it's gonna open each of these images in separate tabs. They're not gonna be combined on a layer stack. If I choose open as layers, they'll be combined on a layer stack. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll select that option. It's gonna take my two photos and it's gonna transfer me over here. And then on the right hand side, inside my layer stack, I've got my overexposed image on top of my underexposed image. And I can turn them on and off with that little eye icon so you can see they're stacked together here. Now to combine them, we have our masking bug. And I love the masking bug because it's super easy to use. It's a way for you to create a gradient based mask. When you're working with a photo like this one, I don't want to have to hand paint out this entire sky. It's a pretty straight horizon line between the top and the bottom there. So it's going to be really easy to combine. So with the masking bug selected, I'm going to go up and I can open up the shapes drop down menu. And these are some basic shapes for masks that you want to create. So we're going to choose this one. It's called linear top, which means you can actually see a little preview. It's going to mask out the top part of this, this image here to reveal the sky underneath. Now it'll place this masking bug on our image and we can click to move it around if we want. If it's not quite in place, there's a little rotate button on the right hand side kind of looks like a little compass if you need to rotate your bug. And then there are dotted lines on the top and the bottom. These indicate the feathering amount. Now, once you have it in place, if I pull these really close towards the center, it creates kind of a straight line between the top and the bottom, and it looks really bad. If I pull these out, it creates a softer feather. And now I get a slightly more realistic look on my image so that it doesn't look quite so harsh around that horizon. Now, this is a pretty basic masking technique, but what's wonderful about perfect layers is that I can also do retouching in here as well. Now, before I do that, I need to merge these two photos together. The way I suggest you do that is by going up to the layer menu and choosing an option called new stamped layer. And this is one of my favorite things about perfect layers as a whole, because I think it's such a cool option. If I merge my two layers together, I lose the mask that I created. So I went through and I, I made this nice mask on the right hand side, you can see it. And I want to be able to access that again, if I need to make some small adjustments to it or anything like that. If I merge my layers together, I lose that information. So by going up to the layer menu and choosing new stamped layer, it merges them together and create something called a composite layer. Now this does only work with your, your PSD files and it will be a slightly larger file, but I like to have access to that editing workflow. Just in case you don't, you can always click the merge layer button down on the bottom of your layer stack. Now, just like we did inside Perfect Enhance, I can access my retouching tools. I'll choose my perfect eraser on the left-hand side. I'll make it a little bit bigger Let's say we want to remove this little tree stump on the right here. Just going to quickly paint over it and it'll go through and remove it for me. It keeps a nice straight line right along the, the bank here next to the lake. And I can use this across the board and all of the different areas in my image that I want to get rid of. <clears throat> now, just in case it doesn't work perfectly the first time around, it did a great job with the, 
lake and to the bank right down here on the right hand side but there are a couple spots in those clouds that maybe don't look very good they look a little repeated and we don't want that you can continually use this brush and get the look that you're going for so maybe i want to go through and remove some of these smaller little holes in the clouds so it doesn't look quite so patchy. I'm just very quickly clicking and dragging across these areas to kind of soften it out so it doesn't look so repeated. Now once I'm done, let's go ahead and click Save. It's going to go through and save my image. I'll close it out and I can have access to it inside Aperture if I want to. Now one of the things about this is that you'll have to import your image. Now, it's not going to show up automatically for you until you go back and forth in between your different projects. So it takes a second for it to kind of go back and forth between them. So just know that it will automatically import. It just You have to kind of give it a second for it to, to load back into Aperture. Sometimes people get frustrated and they can't see it right away. Just give it a second and it'll pop back up. But now I have access to my edited PSD file. Now what's great about this is this is still a PSD, which means that I haven't erased any of the layers. I don't have access to them in the sense that I can't edit them here in Aperture. But if I open this image again into the photo suite, all of those layers are still going to be there. So I didn't lose that information, which is really nice. So if I want to get this ready for, let's say I want to place this up on my website, I can go through and I can export this and get it ready for the web. But having access to my PSD file gives me a little bit more control over my photo. Now, the other way that you can take images into layers, we're going to select these three photos here. There's a, a picture of a girl's, I think these are a little bit bigger. There's a picture of a girl's boots, a portrait of her, and then a texture. And I want to create kind of more of a collaged based look. I'll select all three of my photos. We'll control click and jump down to edit with plugin. And this time I'm just going to choose perfect layers eight. Now what it's going to do is instead of combining them on layers, it's going to place them in separate tabs. You can actually do multiple different editing workflows here in the suite at a time using each one of these different tabs, which is really nice. This is a great option if you need to do a little bit of editing to your images beforehand. So let's say that we wanted to take this portrait here and place it in perfect portrait before we put it in the collage. I can do that, which is really nice. If I make changes to them, I can save them all as separate images before I combine them together. It's really, really, really useful. So what I wanna do is I wanna take my texture, which is the overlay PSD here, and I want to place it on top of my boots image and combine them together, then place the portrait on top and create kind of a, a layout. So I'm going to go over and choose the overlay image. You'll go up to your layer menu and scroll down to copy layer. We are copying the texture layer in my layer stack. Jump over to the boots photo, go back to the layer menu and choose paste layer. Now I've combined them in my layer stack. To adjust how I'd like the texture to blend into my image, I'll open up the blending drop down menu. <clears throat> and when I hover my mouse over any of these different blending modes, it actually shows me a preview of what they look like on my image. And there are tons of them in here. One of my favorites for textures is called soft light, and it's right next to overlay. They're very similar. Soft light is kind of like the the more intense, high contrast, older brother of soft light. That's how I think of it. So I'm going to choose overlay. <clears throat> you also have a layer opacity slider here. So if the layer is a little too intense, just take the opacity slider and move it over to the left and reduce that a little bit. Now what we want to do is we'll go over to our portrait image, do the exact same thing, go to the layer menu, copy our layer, click on the boots photo, go to our layer menu, and choose paste layer. Now, the texture and the boots photo fit perfectly together. I didn't have to worry about resizing, readjusting, or rearranging them. However, the portrait is like smack dab in the middle of our photo. It looks really weird. It's way too big. 
and I want to rotate it a little bit too. Up on the top left hand corner there's something called the transform tool and then when you select it you get a bounding box around whatever layer you have selected and I have the portrait layer chosen in my layer stack. Now before I resize it by clicking on one of these points on the top or on all of the different corners of our image I want to hold down the shift key. When I do so and then I click and drag my image size in and out, it constrains the proportion of this layer, which means that I don't have to worry about stretching it out and making her look taller, shorter, fatter, thinner, anything like that. If, if I don't use that shift key, it won't constrain the proportions and that can be really frustrating. Then I can click and drag it around into place say I want it over here on the left hand side. To rotate it, I can hold my mouse on the outside of my bounding box and you get this little circular arrow. I'll click and drag and I can rotate it if I want to. And I can move that into place. When I'm done with any changes I make with the transform tool, just click the apply button in the top right hand corner. And it's going to apply that change that it made to that image. Now I can do the exact same thing that we did before. I'll click the save button and I'm going to go through and we're going to close these. And now I have my new edited collage and I've got my original photo still here inside Aperture. Combined these images together to create this kind of layout. It's really, really, really easy to combine images and you have so many different ways to do so. Okay. Let's move on and I want to talk to you really quickly about perfect effects. There are a whole bunch of new things inside perfect effects that's really exciting. One of the best are a lot of the new filters that we've included in, in Perfect Photo Suite 8. We've also made a couple of changes to how you can apply them, which I think is really exciting. So let's start out with an image and we're going to pop it into effects. I'm going to control click on my photo. We'll go to edit in and choose perfect effects eight. Now, once we're in here, one of the things that is very different with how effects works is on the left hand side, you have a filters library. These are all of the different base filters that you can apply to your images. And you'll see, you'll recognize some of them on the left hand side here. So you'll see some of them that you may have recognized from Photo Suite 7, and then there are going to be a couple of new ones. Now, of the new ones, one of my favorites is called Sunshine. Now, this photo right here was taken on a day. It was kind of sunny, kind of, it was partly cloudy, I guess I would say. Um, and the photo looks a little flat. There was enough sun that I could get a good exposure, but the image itself doesn't look like it was taken on a sunny day. And if you live somewhere like I do, we live in Portland, Oregon, that's where our company is based. It's very gray and it's very cloudy and it's very flat very often. When we get sun, we get really excited about it. So being able to simulate a sunshine based look is really nice. So I'll open up the sunshine category. I have a whole bunch of filter presets here. And you'll see we've got a couple of really, really nice ones. I'm going to choose this called Glow and click to add it to my image. Now, what's wonderful about all of these different filter presets is that they're always adjustable. Now, here on the right hand side in the filter options pane, this is where you're going to find all of the different sliders and changes that you can access with this sunshine filter. So I like the glow look on this image, but it's not quite honed in yet. There are a couple of changes that I want to make. The first up at the top is going to be your amount slider. So how much sunshine you'd like to add. If I pull this down to zero, it just has kind of a soft glow to it. And that's it. It's a little boring. As I push it over to the right, it's going to add this nice vibrancy. It's going to add a bit more glow. It's going to add more of a high contrast look. It's really, really nice. It brightens the whole image up. I have a warmth slider here so I can add kind of that sunshiny warm, warm tone to the photo. I can go really crazy and move it really far to the right, but I usually keep it down and add just maybe like five or 10. I have a saturation slider if I want to desaturate my image or if I really want to saturate it and make the colors pop out a bit more. And then last I have a glow slider. 
And as you can tell, it's just this nice, soft, super hazy look. Um, if you don't want to glow, you can drop that down to zero. You get more of a high contrast intensity to the image. Adding a little bit of soft glow can just, I guess, soften the image a bit more. I think the glow works best on portrait images, in my opinion. Um, but this sunshine filter works on portraits or landscapes. It doesn't matter what you shoot. This is one of those filters that, at least for me anyways, has turned into kind of a magic filter. I use it on on 75% of my photos nowadays. Even if it's very slight, it's just the way that it pumps up the image is great. Now, one of the other effects and filters that I want to mention is our new vintage filter. Now on the right hand side in my filter stack, you'll see I have that sunshine filter that we applied on top of my original image. So we can see our original photo here, just kind of flat, kind of drab, and then our new sunshine photo, which is just so awesome. Now I want to add a filter on top of this. There's a plus and a minus button down on the bottom left hand side of the filter stack. I can either delete a single filter or I can add a new one. We'll go ahead and add a new one. Then on the left, I'll jump over to my filters library again, and we're going to go down to the vintage category. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is each one of these has a little flag on the top left hand corner that indicates whether you'd like to save this filter preset as a favorite. So if you know that you really, really love the sunshine filters, which I do, you can see that any of the filled in flags, those have already been saved into my favorites category. To add one, you just click on that flag and it will be placed inside the favorites library. And these are all of my favorite filters. These are the ones that I use on a pretty regular basis. And the sunshine ones are already in there because I use them all the time. Now let's open up that vintage category here. <clears throat> we have tons of different stylings you can add to your images. I'm gonna go down and choose this one called red yellow and I'll click to add it. Now on the right hand side, that filter options pane has readjusted. Now I have a different set of options I can use. The style drop-down menu is going to be the color styling or the vintage styling that you'd like to add to your photo. And I can hover over any of these to get a nice preview of what they look like. One of my favorites is all the way down at the bottom. It's called Warm. And it creates this kind of instant photo vintage film look. And I love it. But there are tons of others in here for all different types of usage and playing around with them is a blast. I really, really love the vintage filter. It's one of my favorites. And it's one of the reasons why I was the most psyched about perfect effects is because of this filter. It's so much fun. Now I'm going to go up and choose the oatmeal filter, which is this warm orangey red. We'll select it. It's very basic. It's very easy to use. There's an amount slider. You can move it to the left to decrease how intense it is, or you can move it to the right to increase the intensity. You can adjust the saturation of your base image. If I pull this down to the left, it only desaturates my photo and leaves the color vintage styling that we added completely alone. And I can also go in if I want to, and I can add saturation. If I wanna make sure that my base image is nice and bright, I can keep my saturation closer to zero. And then also, if you wanna make this more of an authentic vintage image, you can add a little bit of film grain. And this is a nice way to add a little bit of a vintage pop to your photos. Now, before we exit Perfect Effects, I want to save this as a preset. I've combined these two filters together and I've created my own customized filter stack. I'll go up to my preset menu on the top left hand corner of my screen, choose Save Preset. We want to go ahead and give this a name. So we'll call this Soft Vintage sunshine. I can place it in a category. You'll see I already have one called Liz's Vintage Presets, but if you don't have one, you can add your own category, which is really nice. Maybe I want to place this in a film inspired presets category, and you can make tons of different categories. I think it's a great way to work in effects, having lots of different presets for lots of different categories. I usually have ones that are landscape, that are film, that are vintage, that are portrait, and it, it makes working with them a lot easier. We'll click OK, and then I can type in a creator and a description if I want. Now when I'm done and I click Create, I'll jump over to my presets library. These are all of the different P 
PE4 or Perfect Effects 4 presets that you can still add to your images. And then right up at the top, you'll see there's the film inspired presets that I had created. And right there is the soft vintage sunshine. Now what's great is the next image that I open in here, if I want to use this as a preset and just use it flat, if I want to go in and readjust it later, if I want to add other filters on top of it, let's say I add this to a photo and it needs an, a vignette, I can go in and continue my editing process. I, I love, I love presets. Um, I really do recommend that you use them as much as possible and they're so much fun to create. So now I'm going to go ahead and click apply and it's going to go through and add that effect. And then the last thing that I want to show you how to do through Aperture is how to batch process your images. And that is also, there are so many new filters in the Photo Suite 8, but I really do believe that the batch processing is one of the most top notch. It's a complete and utter time saver. And if you're working on a lot of photos, one of the biggest things that I think can be such a drain is having to open every single image and add a preset, add an adjustment, and close the image and open another one. It's just, it's mind numbing sometimes. So if you have a large amount of photos, you wanna be able to export them as quickly as possible. And that's what batch processing is gonna do. Now let's quickly, I'm going to close out of these images here and we're going to jump back over to aperture now really quickly just so you can see i've got my original image right next to my new edited image which is really nice i have a whole bunch of photos in this category that i'd like to add that exact same filter to i've got a couple of photos that i want to add vintage effects so i'll just go through and we're going to select those photos here i'm just going to choose three of them so it goes nice and quickly here I'm going to control click on my image, go to edit with plugin and choose perfect batch eight. Now what it does is it actually transfers you over into the photo suite to open up this batch dialog box up at the top. There's the source pane. This gives you the ability to select a source. Now, when you're working with the program through aperture, it's automatically going to choose something called selected items. These are the images that you've already chosen in, in aperture. Below is the destination pane. And right now it's set to save to round trip, which means that it's going to round trip from Lightroom to the suite or aperture into the suite and then back into aperture. So I don't want to change this save to. I like the fact that it round trips back to aperture so I don't have to worry about where my photos are going to end up. And I I would say 90% of the time, I recommend that people stick with round trip so they don't have to worry about where their photos are going to end up. Now, what we want to do is we want to place this in effects and we want to add a watermark to it. So first we'll click to add a module, which is a little fast forward menu pointing down. We'll choose perfect effects. I need to choose the type, whether I want my presets or my filters. I want to add my own preset. I need to choose which category of presets I want to access. I'm going to keep it at film inspired presets. And then right up at the top is soft vintage sunshine super easy. Now, what's great about this is you'll see on the top and the bottom of my perfect effects eight pane here, I have click to add a module before or after. This is what that multi batch processing looks like. I'll click to add a module beneath. And this time we're going to choose perfect watermark. Now I can actually add a watermark to my images after they're processed in effects. I need to go up and choose my file. If you don't have one, you'll click the choose button on the right hand side, choose the on one logo. And then I can adjust things like the size of the logo, so how big it's going to be on my image, the inset or how close it will be to the edge of my photo and the opacity, how intense I want it to be on my image. Now, the last thing that you can do is adjust the location. And all you do is just click on which part of your photo you want it to be. So if I want it smack dab in the center, top, left, right, whatever I want, I can go through and I can adjust it from here. I'm going to make it kind of small, we'll brighten it up just a little bit. And once we're done and we've gone through and made all of our adjustments, I'll just go ahead and click OK. And it's going to batch process through all three of those images. Now I only chose three so that it would go through pretty quickly, so I don't really have to worry about it. And once it's done, we can go back into Aperture and take a look at those final photos. What's also great about working with Perfect Batch 
is that I don't need to hunt for the images. They're just placed back in, this is my effects project. These are all of the images from my perfect effects folder. These are the images that I use for showing off perfect effects. So they're automatically here. I have, for instance, we'll go to that first image here. Here's my original photo right next to my new edited photo. And I love this preset, so it's really easy. I've got another image here. There's my after photo. And then my last one down here, my original image and my after photo. Super easy.